My name is Renee and today I'll be demonstrating how to make paper cups. What? More specifically, today I'll be demonstrating how to turn your empty plastic bottles into beautiful little keepsakes. So if that interests you, stay tuned. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how I created a series of unique paper mache teacups from salvaged plastic bottles. Now, you may be wondering, why teacups? I've had a fascination with the delicate shapes and forms of teacups since I played with my grandmother's breakable versions <coughs> as a child. From inspiration to execution, I'm taking you along for the ride. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to make your very own. If there's one thing about me is that I am a seeker of knowledge. So often before I start a project, I will do some research and get some inspiration, essentially giving myself a starting point and a direction for what I want to accomplish. In this case, I did a quick search on the anatomy of a teacup. Before constructing one, I wanted to identify the different parts of a teacup and their purposes. Also, since I was feeling just a little bit extra, I created a Pinterest board where I pinned some beautiful teacup inspiration. You can find the link to that in the description. Quick disclaimer, the pieces demonstrated in this video are intended for decor use only and not designed for food use. To begin, we will of course need the plastic bottles I mentioned earlier. Preferably clean, empty plastic bottles with no handles. As you can see, I've collected several different shapes and sizes and I'm going to take advantage of that to create different styles. I'll also be using salvaged cardboard, salvaged brown packing paper, empty plastic containers with or without their lids, empty tape rolls, some thick cord, and some extra lids for paint palettes. Salvaged aluminum foil is an excellent medium for sculpting. Rinse any debris off your foil or just simply use new. Masking tape, specifically masking tape because this kind of tape is flexible and easy to use. It's also cheap. You can use other types of tape like duct tape, but this is my preference. Also, my go-to ingredient, slip, which I'll go into more detail about later. Essential to my project were cutting tools. I used heavy duty scissors, a hacksaw, and a utility knife. Also, my hot glue gun, sanding paper, and my rotary drill. If you don't have these things, you can absolutely use a nail file. Finally, you'll want paint brushes, unless of course you plan to use your fingers. No judgment. Just a little note, the supplies and tools that I list in this video are my preference and my recommendations based on my years of experience with paper mache. I've actually worked in this medium for over 30 years, so what I share here is the result of my own trial and error. But my recommendations are not mandatory. You can switch out any of them based on your preference and what you may have access to. I encourage you to experiment for yourself, and feel free to ask me or members of the community here about alternatives in the comments. As you may have guessed, the bowls of these cups will be made from the tops of the bottles turned upside down. So I'm going to start by cutting the tops off of each of these bottles. Be careful. If you're using a hacksaw like me, proceed with caution. We don't want to lose a finger. Now I'm pointing out here that some of these cups already have a great built-in looking leg to them. So I'm just going to cut off a portion of this neck and preserve what looks good for the starting point of a teacup from there. I'm liking the way this looks, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the rest of the bottle and trim down the lip of the teacup. I mentioned the need for heavy duty scissors for this project, and to be totally transparent, I'm just using my metal shears because they pretty much serve all purposes in my studio. Once I have harvested all of the tops from these bottles, I am still going to go ahead and recycle the bottom portion because that's what we do here. So I'm loving the shapes of these so much so that I've gone overboard and committed to making 10 different styles. Yeah, I'm nuts. Since teacups need feet to stand on, I am turning now to my cardboard scrap pile to cut out teacup feet. I'm simply tracing bottles and other round objects in assorted sizes to create the feet for my teacups. Once I have these traced and cut out, then I'll use my hot glue gun to attach them to the bottoms of the teacups. Once I did this, I decided to go back and add a couple more layers of cardboard to each foot to give them sort of a graduated classic look. I'm also sanding the lips of some of these because they're a little jagged and I want them to be smooth. Finally, I am going to tape up some of them to prep them for paper mache. It's not required, but it helps stabilize them so that they can accept the paper mache layers easier and quicker. 
There are a number of different materials and ways you can create handles for your teacups. If you don't have wired cord like I do, you can actually just take regular rope and tape wire onto the rope, like so, and then you can bend it however you like. You can also use tape rolls. Empty tape rolls are a great staple to keep on hand for different projects. In this case, I'm cutting this empty masking tape roll and using this to shape into another handle. Have fun with this and make some unique shapes to attach to your cups. If you need a little inspiration, try searching online for images of beautiful teacups. Or just head to the aforementioned Pinterest board at the link in the description. Next, it's masking tapes, time to shine. You can use as little or as much masking tape as you like. I mostly use the masking tape to cover up edges, to cover up connections where glue is joining pieces together, and to cover up cardboard or any material that might get soggy when the wet paper touches it. Now that I have all these exciting forms assembled, I am ready to begin applying paper mache. My slip is a mixture of white glue and water that is the consistency of whole milk. There are no exact measurements, so don't overcomplicate this for yourself. Just add water to white glue until it's thin enough to dip the strips easily. If you've watched my other videos, you may be aware that I try to sprinkle tips throughout so that there's value all the way through to the end. So be sure to watch to the end. Speaking of tips, let's have some right now. First and foremost, I recommend preparing the paper that you'll be layering in advance. Rip yourself an entire pile of strips or pieces, whichever you prefer, so that they're ready to go and your paper layering process is quicker and easier. If you're a little bit lost right now, you're not sure what I mean when I talk about the strip paper layering method of paper mache, you can check out a video where I break that down and it's linked in the description below. Just a little note for my accuracy police, I am calling these teacups, but they are also coffee cups. It's whatever you like. Also, I'm not making dishes for these because, well, I'm just not. The video queued up after this one actually demonstrates a technique that will show you how to make dishes for your teacups if you like. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. While we're on the subject of coffee and tea, tell me in the comments, are you team coffee or team tea? Personally, I love both so I should probably own stock in teeth whitening products. Next tip, there are any number of different papers that you can use in paper mache. My personal favorites are newspaper and brown packing paper. No need to limit yourself if you don't have either of these on hand, you can use pretty much any type of paper. Odds are if it can absorb water and is flexible enough to be layered onto a form, it'll work just fine including coated magazine pages, believe it or not. Just a reminder that I've added as many supplies mentioned here as possible to my Amazon list linked on my channel. My next tip concerns the size of your paper pieces. A good rule of thumb is to use smaller pieces or skinnier strips to cover smaller shapes or areas. For larger areas, you'll want to use larger scraps or wider strips to cover the area faster. I realize that some of the steps and tips that I share in this video might be a little obvious to my more seasoned paper mache creators. But since I'm working to make paper mache more accessible for all, I'm breaking down the steps as much as possible for clarity. I will still probably forget to tell you some detail or another and you'll still possibly have questions so feel free to ask them in the comments. To ensure your paper mache pieces dry as hard and durable as possible, I recommend applying a minimum of three to five layers over the entire surface. The great thing about this paper mache layering technique is that if it dries and it's not firm and hard enough for your preference, you can go back and add several more layers and let it dry again and keep checking it and do it over and over again until it reaches your desired durability, hardness, and sturdiness. Now that I've finished paper macheing all of my teacups, I'm going to do a little bit of a <coughs> mashup where I'm going to add some of my paper mache pulp to the outside of one of these cups so I can create a dimensional effect later. So stay tuned. Psst, paper mache pulp is easy to make. Find the link in the description. Now that all of my beautiful paper mache shapes are nice and dry, the brown paper is nice and hard, it is time to prep them for paint. As I mentioned earlier, I will be using my rotary sander to buff out the kinks and smooth out each of these pieces. I'll also be using sanding paper. 
Now this is not a required step, but if you're picky like me, I like a smooth surface on which to paint. So these are the things I do to prepare. For the teacup where I added paper mache pulp, I will simply be sanding flat planes onto it to create a faceted effect. Here's another tip and where those plastic containers I mentioned earlier come into play. Plastic containers come in very handy in my studio. I wash and recycle them for many different uses. Here I'm using them as paint pedestals. They're perfect for setting down a freshly painted piece so that it has a safe place to dry. We are finally finished painting our base coats and ready to embellish. You'll notice that some of my cups are painted white and some have a dark gray background. And that's because I like to experiment with what mediums and colors look better on a light background and which look better on a dark background. The range of wonderful things that you can use to embellish your pieces is infinite. You don't have to be limited to just basic art supplies. You can use just about anything. If you're not interested in painting, you could try doing decoupage using stamps or stickers. You could apply wood shapes, acrylic gems. Just use your imagination. The only thing we're not applying here is limitations, okay? For most of the pieces in this series, I'll be applying acrylic paint to create their designs. For others, like this cup, I will be doing a little bit extra. I've decided to put a hole into this cup to create a place to insert an acrylic gem for embellishment. I'm covering the connection in paper mache pulp, and once it's all dry and secure, I will tape over the gem before I proceed to paint. Here's another cup that I painted with watercolors and finished with a metallic gold marker. On this cup, I simply applied some flexible metal border that I got from the craft section of a local dollar store. Dimensional paints are a great way to create relief patterns on the surface of your pieces. I highly recommend trying dimensional paint. Metallic permanent ink markers are a favorite of mine for adding finishing touches as well. Get creative. What would you use? So I thought I was done with this project, you thought I was done with this project, but no. I came up with one more step, which is one of the reasons why this video took so long to produce. If you're actually still here watching, drop the coffee emoji in the comments. If you haven't already guessed by what's happening in the video right now, I have decided to create lids for some of the cups. Some I will paint to look like coffee, some like tea, and so on and so forth. Once my lids are cut to the correct size for their cups, I will paper mache them. Now that the paper mache is dry, I will be painting and embellishing these lids to include little handles so they can be lifted out of their cups. And here's what I came up with for the handles. A wire face. Next, a biscuit being dipped into coffee. I paper mache this all together, then added a dimensional face I created by pouring hot glue into a silicone mold. Which leads us to another tip. If you have a hot glue gun and you have silicone molds, you can create loads of quick shapes. You can paint them or try colored glue sticks like this one. If you don't have silicone molds, you can use my preferred method, which is simply sculpting pieces by hand in paper pulp. Next tip, if you're enjoying this video, hit the like button to let me know. To add the dimensional sun design to the cookie on my little lid, I simply popped the shape out of the silicone mold, cut it in half, and glued it to the previously paper mache lid. Then I painted the entire piece to look like this. Next, I'm doing a spoon design. So this one's just gonna be a lid with tea and a spoon sticking out of it. So I'm gonna just cut a spoon handle shape out and attach it to the lid. Then I'm gonna paper mache the whole thing and add dimensional paint for the spoon pattern. This one's gonna have a little fake tea bag sticking out of it, so I'm just gonna cut that shape out of a piece of scrap cardboard and attach it to the lid and then paper mache that all together. 10 hours later. Y'all, we have finally arrived at the culmination of this video. Now I realize there might be somebody out there who's wondering why I didn't go more into detail with the painting and the finishing aspect of these pieces. The overall goal of this video was to demonstrate one approach to form building and to share tips and techniques that you can use in this project and others. From there, I encourage you to harness your own creativity to finish your pieces. 
For more information on the products that I use and recommend for sealing and protecting paper mache, head to the description and to my Amazon list at the link on my channel. I will be sharing extended and unseen footage with my supporters over on Patreon. I'll also be giving my Patreon supporters an exclusive coupon code to be used in my second Etsy shop created by Renee.Etsy.com. If you've made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for hanging out with me here in my studio. I honestly hope you give this project a try. And if you do, please be sure to tag me. I am at Created by Renee across social media. Also, I will be choosing one viewer's completed teacup project to share on our community tab here on this channel. So don't forget to tag me. With all that being said, until the next time, stay creative. Coming up, I've got loads of new material for my paper short series called Paper Clips. The Paper Clips series is packed with tips and tricks to take your paper and paper mache projects to the next level. So if that kind of content interests you, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications so you don't miss out.